Welcome music lovers to Creatives on the Couch presented by ASJ Publishing. I'm your host Christine Madaffrey and today I'm speaking with musician, specifically guitarist and singer and songwriter Daniel James. Daniel, welcome to the couch. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you for coming Daniel and I know we're taking you away from a new baby who yeah. wants all your attention. <laughs> Always. Yes, but how is the music going at the moment? What are you up to? Well, at the moment, I'm uh, in the processes of putting together a Christmas EP, album, whatever you want to call it. How cool. So that's, that's in the works at the moment. Hopefully, I'll be sitting down in the next couple of days to start uh, recording it and everything. So do you write some of the songs yourself or do you do um, uh, twists and turns on classics? Mainly twists and turns on classics because I'm not quite at the stage where I can sit down and, and pick up my guitar or the keyboard and write a Christmas song. That's a bit out of my uh, jurisdiction as a songwriter. Okay, but you, you, you might one day. Yeah, probably. Like White Christmas. So are any <laughs> of the classics in there? Um, I'm currently looking at... Uh, Joy to the World. Aww. That's just st yeah. staple classic. Um, yeah. uh, oh Holy Night. That's yeah. probably one of my favourite. Um, there's there's a few others. I'd like to do a, a song called uh, uh, Mary. Did you know? That's a really I, good song. I don't know that one. Oh, it's so it's a, it's relatively new. Really? Yeah. It's uh, written by a, a guy who um, grew up uh, in the church and was always asking the, the question, did Mary know what his son was going to do? That's a very good so, question. Yeah, so it's, it's a song, when I first heard it, I was like, well, that's, that's probably uh, a song that if I did it, I would put my own twist on it, and I think I could pull it off really well. So you have your own like arrangements for these songs ready. You have your, your own like guitarist s spin on them, is it? Yeah. How does a guitarist do that? Do you want, would you mind showing me, like, say, if you took a, a straight tune, are you, are you, could you possibly demonstrate how you might put a little bit of the, right. the, the, the Daniel James quality <laughs> into something? That's... Because it's a mystery to me. I, I mean, right. so what musicians got, um, do. Let's see, what, what could I do? Um, all right. If you just take your most basic, um, you, you put me on the spot. Joy here. to the w if you took joy to the world. Or All right, so that's it, basic, right? Yeah. So what I would do is I'd take that and I would then go. So that's that's what I would do. That's so that's, that's kind of sort of funky. That's blues, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. It's uh, a style that's, <laughs> that's uh, called twelve bar blues. Twelve bar blues. I uh, I grew up when I first learnt to play the guitar. I learnt to play the chords and, and all that sort of stuff. And then uh, my brother, <laughs> of but all how did people. You start, wait a minute. How did you start? You just grew up. You learned to play. What, well, what made it, you pick up the guitar? It, it started when I was uh, about fourteen. So there was just a guitar there, or you? Dad, Dad went out and bought us, oh, bought uh, myself and my brother, and even my sister bought us all guitars. Oh. And um, my brother first started playing it, and I was like, "Well, okay, that's interesting." Yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't really grabbed Grab by it. Mm -hmm. But then when I was uh, listening to him, and it was getting better because it was like when you first start out, dead notes and all that sort of stuff, and I was like, "Well." That's not really what a guitar is supposed to sound like. It wasn't appealing. The, the beginning part was Exactly. <laughs> so as he went along, he got uh, better. His notes got a bit clearer and everything like that. And uh, one day I was like, all right, well, I'll, I'll give this a go. I picked it up. Oh, it was jealousy. Oh, yeah, it was. he's actually <laughs> sounding <laughs> a bit good and, and he's attracting girls. Hello. Yep, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's pretty much what it was. So I we thought a lot of guys <laughs> picked up guitars to attract girls. <laughs> it, it doesn't always pan out that way. But it doesn't hurt. No, exactly. <laughs> it never hurts. Yeah, you talk to a girl and you say, well, I play guitar, and they go, oh, 
Okay, that's yeah. that's that's an interesting. X, an X Men. Yeah, it's an so. Icebreaker. But then when when you turn around, you say, oh, "I also play the keyboard." They go, "All oh, right, see you later." Oh, okay, yeah. So the that that's yeah. that's sort of <laughs> not quite the same. Glamour. Exactly. So. And um, but Paul McCartney plays the keyboard. And oh, exactly, so, exactly. Uh, so you play keyboard as well? Yeah, I uh, dabble. Well, so A when you say bit. dabble, you probably play really well. Well, everyone says I do. I oh, don't think I do. Wow. My dad will sit for hours listening to me play because I play a, so how many, a gothic how many style. Um, how many do I play? Yeah. I play guitar, a bit of keyboard. I can play the bass because it's essentially just a guitar minus two strings. Right. But and you, you play single notes instead of full chords and everything. So it's almost like playing a lead guitar. Right. Um, There's three instruments. All I, I dabble in the drums. drums. I used to play at uh, a church I used to go to. Uh, we didn't have a drummer one Sunday, and the the pastor says to me, he goes, I, I want you to hop on the drums so we can get some sort of uh, a, a volume balance going on. And I was like, well, I don't play drums. And he goes, just go and play it. And ah. I was like, okay, then I got on the drums, and after they finished uh, the, the morning um, sound check and rehearsal, he comes up to me and he goes, all right, from now on you're playing drums until we find a drummer. And I'm sitting there going, oh, that's... Not really my forte, but I'll give it but a go. But how do you do that as well as playing guitar? You would have to run from the drums <laughs> to the guitar to the drums. Well, <laughs> well the, the funny story was they ended up playing everything with the keyboard, bass guitar and acoustic and, guitar. And drum. And, and yeah, I was on the drums. And you were on the drums. Oh, isn't that amazing? So and you didn't even know you no, could I was, play drums. I, was, like, I knew how to play a basic beat. That was it. Wow. So I had to figure out Phil, still can't play them. Oh. But oh, wow. it worked. So you're, you're obviously a natural musician. Yeah, yeah. After I gave up half a dozen times. After you gave up a natural yeah. musician. Well, we're going to stop for a, minute, for a minute and take a break and we'll be back after these messages. Welcome back to Creatives on the Couch where I'm enjoying the music of Daniel James. Daniel? You said that your brother was involved in you picking up a guitar. You saw that he actually made some progress and then you <laughs> thought, oh, it's possible for me too. Yeah. So is there any rivalry between you guys? Do you oh. play together in bands? Or? We, uh, there's always been the rivalry because uh, him being a left-hander, he can do with the guitar what I can't. Ah. But we've always grown up playing in uh, bands together. We, uh, we started out as the, just the two of us and we got a uh, couple of mates who come in and they'd play the bass and uh, the drums for us if we needed it and that and that was that was good um then we decided up oh, we're going to get serious and we formed uh the band that we were in for quite a long time uh Ken and I are 1522 wow yeah it's quite a mouthful but wow so now why why that name that's that's sort of a question that you'd have to ask uh, my brother because he's the one who knows all about it. All I know is it it comes from the Bible, I think. Okay. From uh, Second Chronicles. Okay. I think. Okay. If I have my memory. It serves you right. Yeah. Uh, Fifteen well, twenty-two. Can look it up. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's chapter fifteen, verse twenty-two, I believe. And what so it is his is favorite. Uh, now, what happened was, because we were, at the time, we were playing a lot of Christian-based music. Right. And even our original stuff is all heavily Christian-based without yeah. the, um, the heavy inference of uh, the Christian and all the Jesus and all that sort of stuff. So uh, we've got all of that. So what happened was we are like, uh, going through, going, well, what are we going to call ourselves and all this sort of stuff. And... I think if I remember correctly, Joel came out with, uh, or it could have been Dad, come out <laughs> with, uh, what about if you call yourself Ken and I? And we're like, I was like, well, at the time I was like, who would want to call themselves that? Yeah, but that's what they said about Procol Harum. Exactly. That's what they said about Hop, the Flop, what is that? Flock of Seagulls. No. Um, <laughs> mock the Hoople. Oh, yeah, Mock the Hoople, yeah. I mean, really, Mock yeah. the Hoople. Yeah. I ask you. You got Cream. That's another one. Who what would call themselves Cream? Well, who would want to call themselves the Beatles? Yeah, exactly. I mean, the Rolling Stones. Yeah, yeah, they, they seem to make stones roll a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and they, 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 their, their age sort of yeah. persists that they've, yeah. they've had a few They look like with Rolling them. Stones, <laughs> yeah. They look like so. them. But, you know, Mock the Hoople. 
Yeah, it's... Uh, that it's was all the young awkward. dudes, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, come on, yours is good. At least it means something if, yeah, you, if you go exactly. to the Bible and look it up. Yeah, in, uh, in simple terms, it just simply means made by God. Ah, so, that's what? pretty okay. cool. That's cool. Once, once I, got, I got past the name, I was like, okay, it's not too bad. If, well, if I, I I'm a, not offering anything better. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, I came up with uh, what I was calling a solar project I was doing. Uh, it was uh, PS 119. So it was Psalms 119. Really, oh, okay. Yeah. That's uh, my favorite verse. Uh, chapter. Oh, right. Because it, it's pretty long too. So oh. I was like, okay, it's better than that. Yeah. So I was like, I'll, I'll run with it. Yeah. And we were in that for six or seven years. And he's your older brother. Yeah, older, yeah. yeah he's so a year older. So does, I mean, uh, only a year older. Yeah. So I know a little bit about sibling <laughs> rivalry. So being, playing together would only intensify whatever conflicting emotions oh, yeah. you have. Yep, yep. Wouldn't they have come out sometimes in gigs? No, mainly at practice. No tantrums? No, oh, at mainly practice. at practice or you like five minutes before we go up on stage. Because a lot of the time, my uh, Joel, he would sing the lead vocal in a lot of the songs because he's able Dan to sing the elder brother exactly because he's able to sing frankie valley right oh. so i'm like don't you what, hate that what, what 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 can i sing i can <laughs> sing smoky um <laughs> what else <laughs> anything that, that involves like torturing your throat i can it's sing it's just not right that the elder brother gets the better <laughs> exactly. voice and he can play better and he gets to come first too <laughs> yes yeah, so it was it was always the argument was where are we standing on stage? And because I played the keyboard, I was stuck. With a lesser profile role. <laughs> exactly. I was stuck sort of off side of stage next to the keyboard and everything. Because people never notice the keyboard player. <laughs> exactly. So I'm like, okay, well, we'd, I'd have a, we'd have an argument and I'd storm off for a couple of minutes and two minutes before we're due to play, I'd come back and I'd pick oh. up the guitar and I'd just play. And what fun. So it was, it was always that. And then, oh, practice was the worst. <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> We'd be sitting there like we went through a phase where we were playing a lot of heavy music. And Joel's and that voice didn't could, help. Exactly, it didn't. <laughs> Joel's voice could get up there, but he didn't have the, um, the, the power behind his voice to really punch it out. And that's where I had the... And that's where the second child has their glory. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but in doing that, I, I literally destroyed my voice. Ah, so there's was, a downside to competing yeah, with it your is. brother. It is. It's oh, a no. big downside. So oh. um, in the end, it, we did that for a, a year or so, and um, it got to a point where after a show, I couldn't talk, and halfway no, through the really show, I had to stop because oh. it was getting to a point where it was yeah. so painful. Oh, you poor thing. And um, it's only I had to go and get vocal lessons and everything. I did like yeah. four or five lessons before the, the guy said, well, your voice is at a stage now. If you keep doing what I've given you to do, it will eventually repair itself. Oh, fantastic. So um, I'm sort of off and on because I haven't really done a whole lot of singing for a really long so time. So your voice is like net right now convalescing. Pretty much. I find that so interesting because apparently Jimmy Barnes was told by um, a, a very respected um, vocal coach in Australia that if he kept on singing the way he was singing... Oh, he wouldn't have a voice. That's what that's what the guy said. He said you will have no voice at a certain point exactly. because what you're doing is basically destroying. Oh, it was like that. So he just went on screaming. Exactly. The, the <laughs> fella from Aerosmith had to have surgery on his vocal oh. cords because they started bleeding. Oh. Because of the way that he sings. Yeah. And he's constantly under heavy monitoring on stage. But the thing is, it must be a very difficult thing to change the way you sing. Oh, it is. It's like telling a tennis it player. Is play with the other hand. Exactly. It is very hard. Right. Especially when you get up on stage and the, the fold back system isn't great and you sit there and it's like, okay, well, I need to hear myself and you start pushing more and then there's a lot of throat gets involved and then you walk off the stage after you're done. You're like, how can I do this? I can't even be bothered to yell at my son now. Or my, exactly. I, I can't even, I'm not <laughs> even there for the arguments with my wife. Oh, I don't even <laughs> yell at work. And I'm in a factory, so. You need to yell. So well, on well, that note, poor Daniel with no voice <laughs> left. We will take a break and be back with you after these messages. Welcome back to Creatives on the Couch. And we're having a great time with Daniel James. Uh, Daniel? 
would you like to play for us? What do you want to hear? Um, well, look, I love the blues, but whatever you want to play, <laughs> if it's an original, if it's a, if it's a, a standard, whatever you want to play, it'd be great. All right, what I'll do, I'll, I'll run through some of the guitar riffs that I've come up with and, wow. and all that sort of stuff. Amazing. I haven't, as I said before, I haven't sung in so long. My voice is probably that dead. Would you like me to help? <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to see that look on your face. No, I just wanted to see you cringe. No, I wasn't really going to sing. I, uh, I pull no, that I face at my sister too. <laughs> no, so. I, I, I won't sing. I promise. <laughs> you go all ahead. Right. All right, so what we've done is over the years, we've come up with like so many songs and so many that haven't seen the light of day. Yeah. And then there's so many that have, like there's one that uh, I was asked to play, but I refused to sing it because there's half a dozen versions floating around and I can't remember the words off the top of my head because <laughs> I haven't sung it in forever. But... Um, what I can do is I'll go through, I'll, I'll play a bit of the, the guitar riffs and I'll, I'll let you know the background behind the song and where it all come from. That would be so great. So I'll start with the one that I wrote entirely myself. It's uh, sort of a, a take off of a few different ideas that, or a few bands that I was listening to at the time. And uh, it's just a, a straightforward blues rock song. So cool. it's, it's just called Live For Him. Awesome. And the, the riff is, is really straight down the line, so it's just... That's practically it. So that's, that's that one. That's amazing. That's, that I wrote entirely myself. I bought it to the band originally and they were like, it's a great song. Our drummer at the time couldn't figure it out. But how did those? How did the notes come to you? How does the? How does the the well, melody come? That that's that's something that I'm probably shouldn't mention. Okay. Because it's a sort of. Uh, <laughs> it's a magical. Pro it is a magical I, process, well, isn't it? That particular song, the the lyrics were something that that I came up with entirely off the top of my head. But the guitar riff, I sort of modified slightly a song I was really liking at the time. Okay. So, and I'm not really going to no go into no that worries. because I might get caught copyright no, wise. No, no, but all so. artists, all artists build on the work exactly. of the artists before them. So I mean, that was, Shakespeare did that too. That was where um, it all it all started song writing wise for the band. We had that. I did another song that was just a straightforward pop song that I wrote uh, eight months into uh, the relationship that I was with uh, with my wife we were together and we were going strong and it was getting a bit bumpy and everything because there was there was other people coming along trying to drag me away and mm. all that sort of stuff and um, she was at the point where she was gonna leave and I was like well that's not right so I wrote a song about it but oh. I had to drop it because what happened was I found out a couple of months after I wrote the song that uh, a, a band that was already relatively well known in the, the pop uh, charts and that wrote a song that was slightly different, but the choruses were almost exactly the same. Isn't it amazing how that sometimes happens in history? That actually happens in history. Like oh, it does. Um, Dennis the Menace actually came out on two different continents at the same moment. Mm. Did you know that? And so it, sometimes it's just synchronicity. The same oh, idea is. will surface. It is in the same place. So, <laughs> well, that was bad luck, though. Exactly. So I was like, well, I can't do that anymore. And she's constantly saying to me, you should play the song. You should play it. I'm like, I can't even remember it. It is yours. You came up with it at the same time as someone else, but it is yours. Exactly. I can't even remember how it goes. So that would be like trying to figure out what yesterday I was doing. So, uh, yeah, the, that song I was, I liked. I thought it was good because yeah. it was talking about our relationship and that and how how she made me feel, which was oh. something else. It can't be lost forever. It can't be that hard to think of what you were doing yesterday. I agree with your wife. I think you should find <laughs> that song. And quite frankly, I find your excuse lame yeah. <laughs> that you can't remember She it. says the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear it. So next time you come back, oh, I'll have to you, find have, it. you better find that I will, song. I'll find it. And so... 
So the, the next one that we were doing was, uh, a lot of these were lyrics were written by my sister. She's a, a lyricist through and through. Oh, lucky. Yeah. No, you are lucky. Oh, yeah. Really. Oh, yeah, especially when her lyrics are dark and they, they fit blues music really well. It's just trying to figure out how to sing them is the yeah. hard part. But uh, there's quite a few that sort of float around and it's a lot of it's just chord based stuff because it was harder to come up with it. But there were quite a few that were riff based sort of music. Like there was one she wrote called uh, Wild Scavengers Hunt. Very dark, very scary song. So uh, that riff was had quite a few different key transitions and everything. And what happened was we settled on uh, this particular run. So the run is. And that's practically it. And then it just repeats that for half the song. I love that. So that's that one. And then uh, there was one that we were doing that I, I wrote part of the lyrics with our uh, ex-drummer and uh, the song's called Tomorrow Never Dies and I can't exactly play that riff because it's in a different tuning so it's sort of hard to play Okay. but uh, that one again was just built off of a two chord progression and it was just fancying around with uh, the chords and everything and that riff was actually come up with by my brother which was quite unique for my brother because he doesn't really come up with guitar riffs but um, we've then got uh, the, the staple one that everyone knows, which is Battle for Life. And this is going to have to carry us out. So before you play yeah. Battle for Life, you're going to have to tell people where they can find your recordings. Oh, well, I've, I've got a uh, Facebook page, which is uh, currently called uh, facebook.com.au, of course, uh, forward slash uh, Daniel James. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy to remember, so. So everybody, this is Farewell from Creatives on the Couch and Daniel is going to play us. Battle for Life. Battle for Life to take us out. Thank you for watching. <laughs>